Hey guys, today we'll be talking about uh, the transducers of Echo Sounders. And uh, previously I have made videos on Echo Sounders. I'll provide you with the links to those videos as well. You don't have to watch them necessarily in a series, but it's a good idea to watch all the videos to get a good understanding about the bridge equipment of uh, the Echo Sounder. So for those of you who don't know what Echo Sounder is, uh, although I'm assuming you're all marinas if you're watching these videos, but uh, if you don't know what Echo Sounders is, Echo Sounder is a uh, bridge equipment provided on the ship uh, to use the depth of the water. So normally we use uh, the Echo Sounder to calculate the depth of the water below the bottom of the ship or keel of the ship and we call that the under keel clearance of the ship. But we can also use it to calculate the the total depth of the water all right so we'll but today's video will be focusing only on transducers of echo sounders we'll start with the principle of operation of the transducer so for those of you who don't know what a transducer is a transducer actually produces the sound energy or also called the acoustic energy uh, in the physical sense a pressure wave uh, a device uh, that's the device uh, that is it is used for. So if you see my previous videos, echo sounders use this sound energy and then transmit a pulse. And this pulse travels through the depth of the water and then bounces back from the seabed. And uh, this is called the echo ranging principle based on which the echo sounder actually calculates the depth of the water. Uh, and therefore the transducer plays a very important role. The transducer is basically a converter of energy. So it converts bursts of electrical energy that it receives through the electronic equipment to pulses of mechanical energy and then vice versa. So when it receives the echo back, it actually converts the mechanical energy back into electrical energy and we'll be talking about these devices today. All right, so the transducer converts the electric energy to mechanical energy and vice versa. This is so uh, that sound may be produced and also the sound signal when received back from the bottom of the sea can be converted back to electrical energy for the eventual display of depth. Uh, so radio frequency, uh, when applied to a transducer assembly will cause the unit to oscillate at its natural resonant frequency. If the transmitting face of the assembly is placed in contact with or close to seawater, the oscillations will cause acoustic waves or sound energy to be transmitted in the water as the mechanical process has taken place. That is something is actually moving in its physical dimension and hence sound is produced. Any reflected acoustic energy will cause a reciprocal action to take place. That is the oscillations of the transducer sensitive element will generate electrical energy due to the specific qualities of the material used in the transducer. As the reflected energy comes into contact with the transducer phase, natural resonant oscillations will again be produced. These oscillations will in turn cause a minute EMF of electromagnetic electromotive force to be created which can then be amplified by the receiver to produce the necessary data for display. A timing device calculates the precise time taken for the sound wave to come back after transmission. This can be fed into simple computed actions and the results shown in the display. It is also important to note that for commercial Marine echo sounders, sound is sent out in what is called the pulse system in which rapid short high intensity pulses are transmitted and received by a single transducer. This allows the system to be in send and receive mode to enable the timing calibrations. Anyhow, for now we will be discussing the different types of transducers. For marine uh, echo sounders, three types of transducers constructions are available. The first two have been found to be sufficiently robust and reliable to be generally used on board merchant ships where the depths to be covered are considerably larger than on a small boat used for fishing or otherwise device or otherwise. The first type of transducers will be the magnetostrictive transducer. The second one is the electrostrictive transducer and the third one is the piezoelectric tra resonating transducer. The first two of course can be used on larger ships and the third one as you will see is used for smaller vessels. All right, so let's start with the magnetostrictive transducer. Now, let me show you a diagram here and you will see here that uh, this figure shows uh, a bar of particular ferromagnetic material around which uh, 
a coil is wound you can see that right so if the bar is held rigid and a large current is passed through the coil the resulting magnetic field produced will cause the bar to change in length the change which is only slight may be an increase or decrease in length depending upon the material used for construction for maximum change of length annealed nickel has been found to be the optimum material and consequently this is used extensively in the construction of the magnetostative transducer right so i hope you had a look through when i showed you the animation so uh, you could notice the change in the length that was showed otherwise i'll show it to you again i hope you can see the current is passing through and you can see a slight change in the length uh, and that is basically i'm trying to show is that for maximum change of length annealed nickel has been found to be the optimum material and this is consequently used for the construction of these transducers all right so as the ac or the alternating current through the coil increases to a maximum in one direction the annealed nickel bar uh, will reach its maximum construction length uh, so that is the maximum it can shrink under the influence of the magnetic field uh, with the current at zero the bar returns to normal again the length now increases in the opposite direction causing the bar once again to constrict the phenomena which causes the bar to change in length under the influence of the magnetic field is called magnetostriction and in common with most mechanical laws possesses a reciprocal quality that is when acoustic vibrations causes the bar to constrict at its natural resonant frequency and alternating magnetic field is produced around the coil as a result minute electric alternating current is caused to flow in the coil and a small emf or electromotive force is generated which is then amplified and processed by the receiver as the returned echo you can see this in the diagram here all right if i keep going for the actual marine magnetostrictive transducer, the annealed nickel bar is constructed of laminated strips bonded together with an insulating material in the same way as a low frequency transformer for optimum performance in given size. You can see this in the figure, which illustrates the construction construction of a typical magnetostrictive transducer unit. The transmitting phase is at the base of the diagram. Magnetostrictive transducers are extremely robust which makes them ideal for use in large vessels where heavy sea pounding could destroy an unprotected electrostrictive type. Hence, magnetostrictive transducers are extensively used with echo sounding apparatus for large ocean going vessels because at the low frequencies used, they can be constructed to an acceptably acceptable size and handle the large power requirements of a deep sounding system. Typically, this type of transducers are suitable when the frequency of transmission are of the lower order, that is below 100 kilohertz. All right, let's move on to electrostrictive transducers. Uh, certain materials uh, such as Russell salt and quartz exhibit pressure electric effects when they are subjected to uh, some kind of mechanical stress. This phenomena is particularly outstanding in the element lead zirconate titanate, the material which is widely used for the construction of the sensitive element in modern electrostrictive transducers. Such a material is termed ferroelectric because of its similarity to ferromagnetic materials. The ceramic material contains random electrical domains which then, when subjected to mechanical stress, uh, line up to produce a potential difference across the two plate ends of the material section. In other words, it generates a small amount of electricity. Alternatively, alternatively, if a voltage is applied across the plate ends of the ceramic crystal section, its length will be varied. And this is the same reciprocal quality as we discussed in the case of the magnetostrictive transducers. And you can see it in the figure here as well. So you can see uh, there is a clear explanation of the above reciproc reciprocity as in the left side electricity is generated when the material is physically stressed while at the right the material is rapidly changing in its physical dimension when electric current is passed at the extremities. The natural resonant frequency of the crystal slice is inversely proportional to its thickness. At high frequencies, therefore, the crystal size is brittle, making it use in areas subjected to large stress factors impossible. This is the problem if the transistor is to be mounted in the forward section of a large mer merchant vessel where pressure stress can be intolerable, particularly in heavy weather. 
all right the fragility of the crystal also imposes limits on the transmitter power which can be used because uh, mechanical stress is directly related to power the power restraints thus established makes electrostrictive transducer unsuitable for use in echo sounding apparatus where greater depths need to be indicated in addition the low transmission frequency requirement of an echo sounder means that such a, a transducer crystal slice would have to be very thick which will be not economical and will suffer in performance the crystal slice is stressed, stressed rather by a voltage applied across its end thus the thicker the crystal slice the greater is the voltage required to stress it which in turn leads to insulation problems as well let's move on to the third type of electricity uh, rather transducer which is the piezoelectric resonance transducer uh, this transducer is often fitted on ocean going vessels only when the power transmitted is low and the frequency is high uh, example are super yachts therefore it is not quite suitable for large ocean going vessels and in this case uh, or in any case this frequency is not for the echo sounder but for the doppler log uh, for smaller vessels where the external stresses are not so severe the simpler piezoelectric resonator is often used uh, this type of transducer makes use of flexible qualities of a crystal slice of a special material if the ceramic crystal slice is mounted in such a way that it can or it is able to flex at its natural resonant frequency acoustic oscillations can be produced the action is again reciprocal so if the ceramic crystal slice is mounted at its corners only and it is caused to flex by an external force a small potential difference is developed across the ends of this element this phenomena is widely used in industry for producing uh, such things as electronic cigarette lighters and fundamental crystal oscillator units for digital watches however a ceramic crystal slice used in this way is subject to the same mechanical laws as have been previously stated for electrostrictive transducers the higher the frequency of oscillation the thinner the slice needs to be and the greater the risk of fracture due to external stress or overdriving the next few slides show you the mounting of the transducers as you can see on the ship where they are mounted these are the large multi beam transducers and then you can see a closer look at the different type of transducers these pictures have been taken in the dry dock uh, for you to understand where the transducers are mounted on the ship's hull all right they are normally covered during the dry dock operations to prevent damage uh, but regular maintenance can be done only in the dry dock Alright, so I hope this short lecture was useful for you to understand how the transducers of an echo sounder operate. Uh, please let me know through feedback what you thought about this video. If you like these videos, please subscribe to this video so that you can get notification on further videos as well. I wish you all the best with your studies and I hope that uh, I'll see you soon with my next video.